whether the audio visual is all good. Okay, that's great. Uh, apologies for the delay. Was raising a lot of issues. You know, it said ki when there's one issue, you will get a train of issues. So a lot of issues. But I hope we will be able to do this now. Uh, maybe we'll have to bear with some connectivity issue today. Uh, never mind. So everyone here, I believe you are appearing for FMG exam tomorrow, and we are here for the final punch. And we are going to discuss a lot of images and the related theory, which are very much expected in your exam. So I think there's a lot of lag which is there. Let me know whether this works. All right, uh, is the audio clear at least? If not the video, is the audio clear? Everyone? Let us try doing this and if there's any issue, do let me know then I can, uh, uh, you know, how to send Carlo. No problem. Uh, so let's start with the images. Uh, uh, first of all, identifying these parasitology eggs, very, very important. Let me know if it gives a lot of issues, then um, I will, I might have to reconnect. Okay. All right. So let's quickly identify these images of the eggs. Now, the first one that we have here. Uh, yes, these are the eggs of schistosoma, okay, parasitology eggs, very, very important. And schistosoma, which is hematobium out of these. Now, the one where you see the terminal spine, okay, the one where you see the terminal spine, this is schistosoma hematobium. So, remember, hematobium T for terminal spine, okay, T for terminal spine. And hematobium UB or BU, this is the one which stays in the urinary bladder that is the vesical venous plexus and it can lead to bladder carcinoma okay it can lead to bladder carcinoma the one which has the lateral spine that is schistosoma mansoni okay mansoni s yes, again it has a spine it's a lateral spine and japonicum is the one which has the lateral knob okay japonicum is the one which has the lateral knob now out of these now tell me what is the drug of choice for schistosoma or basically, in general, for cystodes and trematodes, what is the drug of choice? Uh, remember, it is praziquantel. Okay, it is praziquantel, which is the drug of choice. Okay, which is the drug of choice. Now, uh, going to the next one. All right, so I think we can uh, continue with the discussion. Okay, that's great. So I hope now it will go uninterrupted uh, finally. And uh, let's have the final punch for uh, FMG exam. Chalo, let's go. So this is about schistosoma that we were discussing. Let's go to the next one. Tell me what kind of inheritance do you see from this pedigree chart? So, this pedigree chart is showing what type of inheritance pattern?
absolutely right this is uh, i don't know what's going wrong today all right so here what do we see is this is the mother who's transmitting the disease to all the kids that is the daughters and the son as well again it's the female who's transmitting the disease to all the kids the father is not transmitting to any of the kids so basically mother to all is what we are seeing here right mother to all mother to all so when it is mother to all that means maternal remember maternal m for m it is mitochondrial inheritance pattern okay very very important it's mitochondrial inheritance pattern next one what is the nerve supply of the muscle shown in the image what is the nerve supply of the muscle shown in the image right what muscle is this uh, so this muscle which you see here uh, okay this muscle which you see here this is the coracoid process remember that's the part of the scapula infraclavicular and here you have the acromion process coracoid is a atavistic epiphysis also remember that so this is coracobrachialis muscle which is pierced by musculocutaneous nerve supplied by musculocutaneous nerve remember the root value is c567 it is a branch of lateral cord of the brachial plexus how does it terminate it terminates as lateral cutaneous nerve of forearm okay it terminates as lateral cutaneous nerve of forearm all right next one now coming to some of the important images here very very frequently asked what are we seeing here what are we seeing here so this is the omega shape of the epiglottis that we are seeing this is seen with laryngo malacia okay this is seen with laryngo malacia right this is omega shape what are we seeing in this image here if i zoom in this radiograph here this is the narrowing scene this is the steeple sign where do we see the steeple sign croup that is laryngo tracheo bronchitis what are we seeing here this is the hyoid bone this is the epiglottis the thumb shape of the epiglottis this is epiglottitis okay so this is the thumb sign of epiglottitis this is the thumb sign of epiglottitis this is the steeple sign okay this is the steeple sign that is seen with ltb laryngotracheobronchitis also called as croup very very important also what has been asked previously is where do you see the keyhole shaped glottis remember keyhole is seen with phone asthenia omega shaped is laryngomalacia thumb sign is epiglottitis steeple sign is croup and where do we see turban shaped glottis remember turban is tb that means it is seen with tuberculosis turban shaped glottis is seen with tuberculosis next one very very important to visual field defects right extremely important and even out of this the most important the most frequent which is asked is if there is pituitary lesion right if there is a pituitary lesion like uh, craniopharyngeoma suprasalar lesion which compresses on the optic chiasma what visual field defect does it present with it presents with bitemporal hemianopia now how do you identify bitemporal so basically both the temporal fields the lateral fields will be gone okay bilaterally on both the sides the lateral fields will be gone this is what is bitemporal hemianopia which is due to compression at the optic chiasma okay which is due to compression of optic chiasma remember it's not homonymous hemianopia this is bitemporal homonymous hemianopia basically is seen after the chiasma with the optic tract okay with the optic tract and where do you have macular sparing you have homonymous hemianopia with macular sparing remember it's your occipital lobe okay it's a occipital lobe so basically these visual field defects are on the opposite side left optic tract left temporal left parietal left occipital they cause the lesions on the right side okay they cause the lesions on the right side where do you see pi in the sky and where do you see pi in the floor so basically uh, where do you see pi in the sky and pi in the floor so if it is pi in the sky and pi in the floor sky matlab superior defect okay remember it's a superior defect 
superior defect is in the inferior lobe which is the inferior lobe basically it is the temporal lobe your pie in the floor means the inferior defect is with the superior lobar defect that is parietal lobe okay that is parietal lobe so remember temporal lobe is inferior it causes superior defect pie in the sky and uh, parietal lobe is superior it causes inferior one okay it causes your inferior quadrantonopia all right next one what do you think what is this ulcer what what is the cause of this ulcer is this bacterial is this viral is this fungal corneal ulcer what kind of corneal ulcer do you think is this All right, I hope I'm able to see the live chat. Uh, okay. Now, this is viral ulcer. Okay, this is viral ulcer. Why is this viral? Uh, absolutely right, uh, Gavra. That is your dendritic ulcer. This is called as dendritic or geographic ulcer. Okay, this is called as dendritic or geographic ulcer which is classically seen with herpes simplex virus. Okay, this multiple branching basically. So, this is dendritic or geographic ulcer which is seen with herpes simplex virus. And in the brain, remember that herpes simplex virus affects the temporal lobe. Okay, affects the temporal lobe. With the fungal corneal ulcer, the classical history would be the injury with some vegetative material. Let's say it's a farmer or someone plant injury vagera. And it is the uh, symptoms are less. It's not very painful. Okay. It's not very painful. That is the classical history that you have. So fungal, if it is aspergillus, very, very important for aspergillus. Remember, A is, it is the acute angle branching virus. It's a virus, not fungus, sorry. So it's a fungus with acute angle branching and it has septate hyphae. So basically, you will see septate hyphae with acute branching with aspergillus. The drug of choice is A co ulta cardo, it will be V. The drug of choice is Voriconazole. And another important keyword for fungal ulcer would be satellite lesions. Okay, it would be satellite lesions, which is another important keyword. Right? Remember that if there is a history of contact lens, a person wearing contact lens, Us case mein consa ulcer is common. In that case, we have a canthamoeba. Okay, we have a canthamoeba keratitis. Yeah, swimming wala history hai, contact lens ka history hai. Think of a canthamoeba. Okay, a canthamoeba. All right, let's go to the next one. Tell me what culture medium is this? So, we have mixed bag images here basically to be discussed, which are very, very much expected in your exam. So, this is the LJ medium, Lowenstein Jensen medium, basically, which is used for mycobacteria, that is uh, including mycobacterium tuberculosis, wala, which gives your rough, tough, and buff colonies. Okay, rough, tough, and buff. So, remember, this is LJ medium. Okay, this is LJ medium. Next one. Uh, if this is the TCBS medium, okay, if this is the TCBS medium, Tell me these colonies that we are seeing, whether these are Vibrio cholerae or Vibrio parahemolyticus, what is this uh, Vibrio? So, when you see the yellow shaped colonies, this is Vibrio cholerae. Okay, remember this is Vibrio cholerae. That is TCBS is a selective medium for Vibrio cholerae. It gives your yellow shaped colonies. Parahemolyticus wala will give green shaped colonies. And what is the mechanism of action of cholera toxin? What is the mechanism of action of cholera toxin? Basically, it increases cyclic AMP. Okay, remember it increases cyclic AMP. Which are the toxins which act by increasing cyclic AMP? Which toxins act by increasing cyclic AMP? Remember the mnemonic is cyclic AMP, cholera, anthrax, M ko ab gumado, it will become E. So, E coli, heat stable or heat labile, it is labile in the air stable on the ground so heat labile is cyclic amp heat stable is cyclic gmp and what is p for p for pertussis okay p for pertussis bordetella pertussis which toxins act via ef2 
रिमेंबर टू मतलब दो टू मतलब दो एंड टू मतलब डाई दो मतलब सुडोमोनास ओके इट इज सुडोमोनास एंड डाई मतलब डिफ्टेरिया ओके डाई मतलब डिफ्टेरिया सो दीज आर दंस विच एक्ट वाया ई एफ टू फैक्टर इनिबिशन ओके ई एफ टू फैक्टर इनिबिशन next one what do you think is this organism here what is the appearance of the colonies and what is this organism what is the appearance and what is the organism here right so this is the fried egg colonies okay these are the fried egg fried egg appearance of the colonies which are basically seen with mycoplasma okay remember these are seen with mycoplasma so uh, the mnemonic basically is imagine like myco like your myco in turn uh, likes to have egg fried egg in the dinner okay so myco is mycoplasma it is fried egg colonies and dinner is basically your dines method of staining is used okay dines method of staining is used this is also called as pplo or etons agent and remember it has no cell wall so beta lactams which act on the cell wall will not be effective against mycoplasma okay they will not be effective against mycoplasma all right next one what do you think what egg is this very very important and frequently asked what egg is this right so this is the classical barrel shaped with bipolar mucus plug that we are seeing barrel shaped with bipolar mucus plug remember trichuris trichura okay this is trichuris trichura which is the barrel shaped egg with bipolar mucus plugs very very important theek okay? hai All right. Another important image here. If you get this appearance, what appearance is this? This is the slabbed cheek appearance. Okay, this is the slabbed cheek appearance. And what what virus gives the slabbed cheek appearance? Basically, it is parvo virus. And what is the infection? This is erythema infectiosum. Okay, erythema infectiosum. And basically, it can also present with a plastic crisis all these are important points remember this it can present with a plastic crisis erythema infectiosum it's a fifth day disease it's the slabbed cheek appearance okay next one what virus is this what do you think what virus is this right so when you see this filamentous shape okay when you see this filamentous shape of the virus remember a b c d e f this is filamentous shape of the virus this is ebola virus okay ebola virus which has filamentous shape please watch the nf100 episode of general virology also where we have discussed the uh, classification which is dna which is rna envelope non envelope very very important okay next one now mycology is something which is very important we have seen a lot of questions in neat pg 22 also so let's identify the fungi here here where you have the broad based budding the figure of 8 appearance remember the figure of 8 8 is like b when you write b it is like 8 this is blastomycosis okay this is blastomycosis figure of 8 broad based budding this one where you have the pilot wheel appearance okay this is the pilot wheel appearance or the mickey mouse appearance remember p for p this is paracoxidioidomycosis okay pilot wheel appearance paracoxidioid now this was asked in the uh, this year neat pg 22 the copper penny bodies okay these are called as copper penny look at this coppery appearance copper penny bodies also called as sclerotic bodies or the medullar bodies remember c o c o this is seen with c that is chromoblastomycosis okay chromoblastomycosis which again is a subcutaneous uh, fungal infection okay it affects the subcutaneous tissues chromoblastomycosis copper penny bodies very very important what is this one what fungus is this so this is a tube formation the germ tube formation 
okay this is called as germ tube formation or the reynolds phenomenon okay this is called as germ tube or reynolds phenomenon which is seen with candida albicans okay this is basically candida albicans next one very very important and uh, much expected in your exam if you have a history of thorn prick there's a gardener who had thorn prick and then you see the nodulo ulcerative lesions which are along the lymphatic spreading along the lymphatics like this this is sporotrichosis okay remember this is sporotrichosis very very important which has cigar shaped yeast right which has cigar shaped yeast sporotrichosis is what you need to remember spreads along the lymphatics theek hai next one in the cd scan what do you think is this fungal infection basically what do you think which fungal infection is this so what are we seeing here basically there is a cavity inside which there is something sitting that's a fungal ball and you have the air crescent sign okay you have the monoid sign or the air crescent sign so this is monoid sign or the air crescent sign which is seen with aspergilloma to be specific this is aspergilloma not even abpa remember allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis will have central bronchiectasis classically remember this terminology central bronchiectasis is abpa you will see the bronchi which are dilated and they are filled with mucus so that gives the finger in glove appearance okay that gives the gloved finger or the finger in glove appearance this is aspergilloma that is the fungal ball okay that's the fungal ball again remember acute angle branching septate hyphae that is what you would see with aspergillus the image of aspergillus is very much expected in your exam next one what are we seeing here what do you think what fungal infection is this so this is the india ink staining basically showing the capsule which yeast which fungus is capsulated this is the mucy carmen staining okay this is mucy carmen stain so this is cryptococcus okay this is cryptococcus which can cause cryptococcal pneumonia it can cause cryptococcal meningitis okay and again this is a opportunistic infection uh, at what cd4 count we start with the prophylaxis less than 50 okay remember that for pcp we start the prophylaxis when the cd4 count is less than 200 pcp pneumonia uh, it gives your crushed ping pong ball appearance right the crushed ping pong ball appearance we use methanamine silver stain for pcp mucy carmen is used for cryptococcus methanamine silver stain gms stain is used for uh, pcp okay it is used for pcp and for cryptococcal meningitis what is the drug of choice for cryptococcal meningitis basically we use amphotericin b along with flu cytosine okay along with flu cytosine and what is the classical um, csf finding in viral meningitis remember in viral meningitis the glucose is normal because virus do not eat glucose in bacterial and fungal the glucose will be less right in virus the glucose would be normal theek hai next one what do you think would this be if this is a patient with meningitis and now presenting with the skin lesions the patient also has features of shock that is hypotension what is the causative organism what is the causative organism in that case meningitis with skin lesions with shock that is hypotension so this is the classical history of waterhouse fredrickson syndrome okay that's a classical history of waterhouse fredrickson syndrome which is basically seen with nizaria meningitidis remember it is nizaria meningitidis and basically it causes adrenal hemorrhage and because there is no adrenal no steroids that is why it leads to shock okay so waterhouse fredrickson syndrome a patient of meningitis now having the purpura the skin lesions and hypotension thing of meningococcal meningitis 
and what complement defect uh, uh, predisposes to recurrent meningitis uh, miseria meningitidis remember it is your late complement deficiency c5 to c9 that is membrane attack complex okay membrane attack complex the late complement deficiency next one what do you think is this so uh, bacteria here what do you think is this bacteria here classically what do we see here there is this black is sharp okay that is this black colored skin lesion here the black is sharp and this is the uh, capsule that you are seeing the pink pink color capsule surrounding this uh, bacteria so basically this is macfadian's reaction positive okay this is macfadian's reaction positive this is the black is sharp so this is basically anthrax bacillus anthracis so remember macfadian okay what is macfadian remember a n is anthrax what is the shape of the colonies remember m for medusa shape colonies okay it has medusa head appearance of the colonies black is sharp what is the medium used it is the plate medium okay it's the plate medium cutaneous anthrax is what is called as malignant pustule okay that is called as malignant pustules it can cause pulmonary anthrax which is called as wool sorter's disease it can cause cutaneous anthrax which is called as hide potters okay which is called as hide potters okay remember it has a capsule okay it has a capsule next one what is this this is the rice tube basically you see those metallic balls there rice tube how do you measure the rice tube ka length ke kitna insert karna hai so basically we measure from the tip of the nose to the ear lobe and then to the xiphoid process so remember n e x that is nose se ear lobe and then the xiphoid that is the length of the tube okay that's the length of the tube for the rice tube insertion now coming to some important surgical positions if you are given image based questions it has been asked in one of the recent exams what is trendelenburg and what is reverse trendelenburg let me ask you this one image a and image b out of these which one is trendelenburg and which one is reverse trendelenburg position which is trendelenburg and which one is reverse trendelenburg so the image b is basically trendelenburg position okay this is trendelenburg position where you have the toe end which is higher the head is low so remember it has toe raising position okay so remember toe raising trendelenburg is your toe raising position and ulta where you have the toe which are down the feet which are down this is reverse the trendelenburg position okay so this is trendelenburg remember toe raising this is the trendelenburg position okay and the rest of the positions that you have so trendelenburg the toe raising feet are high ulta wala is reverse trendelenburg position right you have the prone this is the lithotomy position basically right the lithotomy position in gynec surgeries obstetric surgeries you might have seen that and then you have the uh, jack knife position okay the jack knife position and you have the fowler's position fowler's is basically sitting wala position so look at this fowler's is your sitting position and then you have semi fowler's and fowler's position theek hai so this is trendelenburg reverse trendelenburg out of this is very very important and has been asked previously all right let's go to next one now where do you have the killian's dehiscence in which muscle remember killian's dehiscence basically is in the inferior constrictor this is the thyroid cartilage that we have here this is the cricoid cartilage so between thyropharynges and cricopharynges this is where we have the killian's dehiscence through which comes the uh, through which comes the zenker's diverticulum okay the zenker's diverticulum or the pharyngeal pouch so remember killian's dehiscence basically is in the inferior constrictor the thyropharynges and the cricopharynges next one what is this image showing basically if you see a lesion here below the tongue which is a trans illumination positive 
what is this lesion here this is called as ranula okay this is called as ranula all right next one in this is a mammography image what are you seeing in this mammography image so all this white white whenever you see white on a radiograph mammograph it's calcification this is chunky popcorn calcification so popcorn calcification in mammography this is fibroadenoma okay this is fibroadenoma popcorn calcification if you are given a x-ray pelvis especially of a post menopausal female and you are seeing popcorn calcification remember then you have fibroid okay it is fibroid it is fibroid last fmg exam it was given in the question popcorn calcification in the lung what is the diagnosis remember in the lung it is pulmonary hamartoma okay it is pulmonary hamartoma which shows the popcorn calcification popcorn calcification is generally a benign calcification it's not a malignant calcification it is micro calcification small small calcification in mammography which we are worried about which is malignant okay next one the question is identify the investigation so when you see the circular circular thing the circular circular thing and you see the layers basically this is endoscopic ultrasound and where does endoscopic ultrasound help basically in the t staging of esophageal cancer t staging means the cancer has invaded till what layer of the wall is it submucosa is it muscular layer is it adventitia so remember for t staging basically we use endoscopic ultrasound this is how it looks okay next one tell me what investigation is this what do you think what investigation is this anyone what do you think is this investigation here very good mayank absolutely right that is ercp okay this one is ercp now remember that the fluoroscopy based images they can appear black or they can appear white so even in your dsa digital subtraction angiography where you have it's done under fluoroscopy the vessel can appear black so remember this is ercp this is not a angiogram because you are not seeing the vessel we are seeing the bile duct and we are seeing the pancreatic duct so this is cholangiopancreaticography we are seeing the endoscope coming in so this is ercp does it have radiation exposure yes because it's done under fluoroscopy under x ray uh, do we need a contrast here yes because it's a x ray based modality so we use iodinated contrast uh, what is the disadvantage it is invasive procedure it can lead to complication like pancreatitis but what is the advantage since it is invasive it can be therapeutic also okay that's the advantage next one uh, this is basically the gall bladder we have seen this image yesterday these are the gall stones because we see the posterior acoustic shadowing so remember these are gall stones the investigation of choice is ultrasound okay the investigation of choice is ultrasound uh, next one even this image has been asked in your previous fmg exam so if you see this bowel loop here and from there you are seeing this diverticulum sort of thing arising that is from the ileum and this is meckel's diverticulum and remember this meckel's diverticulum is on the anti mesenteric side okay it is on the anti mesenteric side the side opposite to where the mesentery is attached so some points about meckel's diverticulum very very important meckel's diverticulum can present with acute pain in rif very similar to appendicitis okay it can be confused with appendicitis if it undergoes inflammation uh, there is bleeding then it can uh, okay then it can present with acute pain yes the investigation of choice here is technetium 99 per technate scan okay we do per technate scan and uh, apart from that remember it's a remnant of what is meckel's a remnant of it is vitello intestinal duct it's a remnant of vitello intestinal duct uh, and uh, basically it's a 
true it's a true diverticulum it's not a false diverticulum it's a true diverticulum you have a rule of 2 okay you have a rule of 2 uh, next one if these are the signs seen in a patient of acute pancreatitis what enzymes are elevated serum lipase serum amylase are elevated what do you see in the ct scan we see the bulky pancreas any organ which is inflamed appears bulky now what is this sign and what is this sign in a patient of acute pancreatitis so remember c for central if you see the central discoloration that is the cullen sign if you see the flank wala right we see the flank wala flank may on the side flank is on the side that is turn so that is your gray turner's sign okay that's your gray turner's sign so this is your cullen sign and the gray turner's sign in pancreatitis very very important next one what do you think is this image showing this is the plain radiograph and we see the calcified lesions occupying the pelvis right so you can see the calcified lesions occupying the pelvis this is the stag horn calculi we saw this yesterday what infection predisposes to staghorn proteus because it is urease positive this is also called as true white stone what appearance does it have the coffin lid appearance remember white color clothes white color clothes we wear for a funeral that is coffin lid okay that is coffin lid spongy kidney medullary sponge kidney will only show the calcification in the medulla part if this is a kidney only in the medullary part you would see the calcification okay next one now cvs physiology the pv loop okay this is the pressure volume loop for the left ventricle some important points here now what are the important points here so the width of the graph what does the width of the graph represent if i tell you what do you think is the stroke volume in this patient calculate the stroke volume so basically the width of the graph is the stroke volume the width is 50 and this is 120 approximate so 120 minus 50 that is 70 ml is the stroke volume this part which you see here where the left ventricle volume is increasing from 50 to 125 this is the diastole okay this is the diastole the filling part now at this point the diastole is over and then the systole starts isovolumetric contraction and then there is the ejection phase so at this point basically the mitral valve closes because the diastole is over we don't want more filling so this part basically is the systole and this part is the diastole okay this part is the diastole at what point is the aortic valve opening at this point where the ejection is starting this is the point where the aortic valve opens this is the point where the mitral valve closes okay where the mitral valve closes so this is for the pv loop okay this is for the pv loop uh, very important i've discussed this in one of the mnemonic session also on the unacademy plus platform right correlating it with the valvular lesions how do you identify regurgitation stenosis not very important for fmg exam okay next one tell me what splint is this and for which condition do we use this splint what splint is this everyone please watch the spin uh, splint wala session splints uh, and the tractions and the cast in orthopedics with all the mnemonics i've covered before so what is this splint here So this is basically you can see these are shoes right so it is used for a foot condition that is CTEV and what is this called as this is called as Dennis Brown splint okay this is called as Dennis Brown splint CTEV CTE kite what angle is used for CTEV we have the kites angle okay we have the kites angle this is Dennis Brown splint for CTEV next one uh, barium swallow showing the corkscrew appearance this is diffuse esophageal spasm okay now very very important cadaveric image here which is the image of brachial plexus how will you identify the nerves in the brachial plexus okay how will you identify the nerves in the brachial plexus 
so try to identify this m shape pattern here okay the m pattern basically here now in the m pattern basically the one which is the middle part of the m so if you have the m pattern that you can see here okay so when you have the m pattern here basically the middle part of the m is the one which is very very important that is the median nerve okay that's the median nerve why because basically it has contribution from the lateral cord and the medial cord both so in this image if i ask you what nerve is this this is the median nerve because it is receiving contribution from both right it's receiving contribution from lateral and the medial cord so this is the median nerve the nerve coming from the lateral cord here going here the nerve number 6 this is the musculocutaneous nerve this nerve below the musculocutaneous which is coming from this posterior cord okay this is the posterior cord this is giving the axillary nerve and this is the radial nerve okay the larger one continuing down posterior cord you have the radial nerve so musculocutaneous axillary radial and then you have the uh, median nerve and the ulnar nerve so basically these are the five terminal branches musculocutaneous axillary radial median and ulnar that is mar mu these are the five terminal branches of the brachial plexus identify it by the m pattern okay identify it by the m pattern very very important another important relation here to be remembered in your cadaveric images is uh, basically look at this one okay so this is the scalenus anterior muscle okay this is the scalenus anterior muscle behind that basically the scalene triangle you will see the subclavian artery and you would see the brachial plexus remember that the subclavian vein is in front it's not a component of the scalene triangle and also this nerve which you see which is anterior to the scalenus muscle remember that's the phrenic nerve okay that's the phrenic nerve so remember phrenic nerve is anterior to the scalenus anterior very very important next one what do you think is this radiograph showing so basically there are only two bubbles in the entire abdominal radiograph double bubble appearance basically we have seen this yesterday also all the learners please watch the yesterday's radiology images also this is duodenal atresia okay this is duodenal atresia showing the double bubble appearance next one again a very very important image a reinforcement bird beak appearance this is achalasia the gold standard investigation is manometry okay the gold standard is manometry next one what is this image showing this is the barium enema barium enema and this is the claw sign as in need pg 22 this is intersusception okay this is intersusception what would be the first management hydrostatic or pneumatic reduction theek okay? hai next one what is this if i tell you that this is a patient who has come with rif pain this is appendicitis where you can see this blind ending tubular structure which is thickened like this okay and you have the surrounding echogenic mesentery so blind ending this is appendicitis what scoring do we use in appendicitis remember a for a we have alvarado scoring we have alvarado scoring that is used and what component in alvarado scoring has a score of 2 remember a score of 2 t w basically it is tenderness in the rif not the rebound tenderness just tenderness and w for increased wbc count that is your leukocytosis okay that is leukocytosis these are the two which have a score of 2 okay this we have seen yesterday the anatomy sap svc ascending aorta pulmonary artery this is the bronchus and this is the pulmonary embolism ecg most specific sign s1 q3 t3 pattern okay that's a most specific but the most common is basically your sinus tachycardia need pg 22 question in which condition do we see u wave in ecg u wave remember u is under kalemia okay it is under kalemia that is u wave is seen with hypokalemia okay u wave is seen with hypokalemia where do we see delta wave on ecg remember delta wave is seen with wpw syndrome okay wolf parkinson white syndrome wpw we see the delta wave 
it has short PR and a broad QRS. Okay, short PR and a broad QRS. This is aortic dissection, which is showing the aorta divided into two involving the ascending aorta. So, this is Stanford A and this will require surgical management. Okay, this will require surgical management. Next one, very, very important uh, image which is almost always there in the exam. This is the left-sided pneumothorax with the collapsed lung here. Okay, this is left-sided pneumothorax, immediate management, wide bore needle followed by the ICD drain. Okay, so this is also your pneumothorax on the right side with the mediastinal shift. This is a CT scan image of the pneumothorax. This is the lung and this is the surrounding pneumothorax, black without any vascular markings. This is pneumothorax on CT scan. This is again pneumothorax where you see the another sign in pneumothorax, which is called as deep sulcus sign. Okay, this is the deep sulcus sign seen in pneumothorax again. And very, very important, a much expected image in your exam. Where do you see the barcode or the stratosphere sign? Basically, all the horizontal lines that we see, the barcode or the stratosphere sign, this is seen with pneumothorax. Basically, this is included in e fast. This is on M mode of ultrasound. The normal lung shows what sign? Look at the normal lung. In the lower part, you will see the granular appearance because of the moving lung. That is called as the seashore sign. So, remember that normal lung shows the seashore sign. Pneumothorax shows the barcode or the stratosphere sign. All right. Next one. This we have seen yesterday the cobra head appearance that is seen with ureterocele. Okay. That is the cobra head or the adder head appearance. Okay. Same. Now, what is this investigation here? Is this a CT or is this a MRI? And what do you think is the diagnosis here? Is the CT or MR and what do you think is the diagnosis? Very good. This is MRI. Okay, this is MRI because you see the black, okay, the black lining surrounding the brain parenchyma. Okay, this is MRI, the black lining surrounding the uh, brain parenchyma. It's a black bone. And these are the Dawson's fingers. Okay, the finger like projections. These are the Dawson's fingers which are seen with multiple sclerosis. Okay, these are seen with multiple sclerosis. What drug given in multiple sclerosis can cause PML? Progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy. Remember the monoclonal antibody, natalizumab. Okay, that is natalizumab. If a patient gets an acute relapse of MS, what is the treatment of choice, the drug of choice? We give pulse steroids. Okay, we give IV pulse steroids, 1 gram for 5 days to that patient for acute relapse. What criteria are used for MS? We have McDonald's criteria. Okay, McDonald's criteria is used. Next one, what do you think is this image showing? This is the blunting of the CP angle. This is pleural effusion. What is the most sensitive investigation? The most sensitive investigation is ultrasound. Okay, this is pleural effusion. Next one, what is the diagnosis here? Again, the blunting with the meniscus sign. The lateral part going more up. This is not horizontal. This is pleural effusion. This is not hydropneumothorax. Hydropneumothorax will have horizontal level. Okay, hydropneumothorax will have horizontal level. Next one, another much, much expected image in your exam, almost always there. Black air, air under diaphragm. This is pneumoperitoneum. The most common cause is bowel perforation. What contrast is contraindicated in perforation? It is barium which is contraindicated. What is the management of this patient? Resuscitate, give IV fluids and laparotomy. That is surgery needs to be done. Uh, you can do CT scan abdomen with oral contrast and IV contrast. 
basically to look for the site of leak so okay so in air containing pathologies remember it is ct scan which is the investigation of choice it is the most sensitive now what is the best x ray view for pneumoperitoneum remember the best x ray view is chest x ray erect but if the patient is not able to stand erect then what decubitus x ray view remember we do left to lateral decubitus always it's a left lateral decubitus with vertical beam or horizontal beam with horizontal beam of x ray remember it is left to lateral decubitus with horizontal beam of x ray so remember in the contrast what contrast you will use we will use iodinated contrast okay we will use iodinated contrast and uh, the preferred one is iohexol because it is safer in the options if you do not have iohexol you have gastrographin remember gastrographin is also an iodinated contrast okay so go with iohexol or go with gastrographin okay iohexol or gastrographin next one the type of the hemorrhage is here the one which has the biconvex shape edh the sickle shape remember edh is idli shape sdh s for s it is sickle shape the one in the sulcal spaces subarachnoid hemorrhage which is due to aneurysm rupture trauma and this is intraparenchymal which is due to hypertension all right which is due to hypertension so what kind of hemorrhage is this which is right in the middle of the brain surrounded by brain this is intraparenchymal hemorrhage most common cause is hypertension what is this in the cd scan remember this is the third ventricle behind that is the pineal gland this is the pineal gland calcification okay that's a pineal gland calcification this is the biconvex shape edh idli shape edh this is the banana crescent or the sickle shape this is the sdh okay this is the sdh what is this one this is biconvex shape edh which does not cross the sutures remember lucid interval is seen with edh lucid interval is seen with edh very very important all right done with this this is the subarachnoid hemorrhage the blood in the cisterns the star of death this is the subarachnoid hemorrhage okay tell me what is this image showing basically this image is showing the trident hand the increased gap between these fingers the trident or the starfish hand which is seen with achondroplasia okay remember this is seen with achondroplasia the chromosome number is 4 the defect is in your fgfr that is the gene affected and it is autosomal dominant okay and it is autosomal dominant all right okay so that was for today in the most important okay in the most important images okay regarding your uh, x ray views the pras and the waters views uh, shabas i would highly suggest that there's a video i am not included here there's a video on paranasal sinus x ray views on this youtube channel itself with the mnemonics i have discussed how to remember which x ray to be used for which sinus i'll just show you quickly the images how to identify waters view and cardwells view which has been asked in your fmg exam previously uh, let me show you how do you identify cardwells view and the waters view all right so look at this one like this image here cardwell's view remember cardwell well is in front of the house that is the trick to be remembered so cardwell well is used for frontal sinus so this is where you see the frontal sinus right you don't see the maxillary sinus there is this petrous bone overlapping the petrous bone overlapping the maxillary sinus so this is not for maxillary sinus so waters view is for maxillary sinus where you see the frontal sinus very well that is the cardwell view it's a straight image that you will see so this is basically occipito frontal view and what is the waters view how do you identify waters the maxillary sinus will be seen better it would be some position like this you will see the maxillary sinus very well in the waters view right look at this one you don't have any bone overlapping okay that is the waters view if it is waters view with open mouth then it is called as pra's view okay then it is called as pra's view so waters view is basically your 
occipito mental view it's a no strain position you want to see the maxillary sinus no strain position okay uh, cardwell is for the frontal it is the nose forehead position okay it's a nose forehead position all right so where you see the maxillary sinus well that is your uh, water's view okay that's the water's view basically uh what Okay, in which both frontal and maxillary sinus present, Shabas, if they ask you in which x-ray view all the sinuses are seen, we can see all of them in water's view, open mouth, and also we can see in the lateral x-ray. So, either water's view, open mouth, which is also called as PRA's view, and the lateral. What is the advantage with water's view, open mouth, as compared to the closed mouth? Uh, remember, in the open mouth, you can see the sphenoid sinus as well. Sphenoid sinus also can be seen. That is the advantage. Okay, that's the advantage. All right. Um, what investigation of choice, Keithi? If you ask me from the radiology perspective, some quick points. Remember, if it's a fluid containing pathology like pleural effusion, pericardial effusion, ascites, it is ultrasound, which is the investigation of choice. If it's a soft tissue pathology like muscular, nerve ka pathology, tendon, cartilage, ligament, then it is MRI. If it is calcification that you want to see, then it is CT scan. If it's an air containing pathology like pneumothorax, pneumoperitoneum, the most sensitive again is CT scan. In your musculoskeletal pathology, the first investigation generally is X-ray. For bone marrow pathologies, where you want to see the bone marrow edema, in that cases, remember for marrow, it is MRI. For bone cortex, it is CT scan. Okay, for bone cortex, it is CT scan. And in generally, in your vascular pathologies, in emergency conditions, we prefer doing CT angio because it is quick and it's easily available. Okay, so for vascular pathologies, generally, it's CT angio. If it's a patient with peripheral vascular disease presenting with intermittent claudication and all, in that case, the first investigation we do is Doppler. Okay, in that case, the first investigation we do is Doppler. Uh, ovarian tumor markers, I've covered in uh, one of the videos. Just search in the Telegram channel, ovarian tumors. Uh, you will get the link for that. In one of the special classes also, I've covered. Uh, just check in NF100 episodes as well. Okay, NF100 also. Uh, CD markers, ovarian tumor markers, I have taken this in the NF100 also. Please watch the NF100 episode for CD markers, okay? Alright, any other queries guys? So, you have the final D-Day tomorrow, 4th of June. Most important, remember the most important thing is to maintain your calm. Go relaxed and have the faith that you would be able to crack it. It's not as difficult as it seems. You just want to cross that 150 ka mark out of 300, which is very, very important. And uh, remember that no matter however might be your part A, in the break, do not waste your time or do not lose your hopes if your past A was not good. Do not let the performance of part A affect the performance of part B. I, I totally believe that each one of you will definitely, you know, pass with flying colors. And I would be waiting to hear from each one of you post exam. In the evening after your exam, please do not forget to drop a message. And I hope all these sessions that we have done, NF100, FMG Short Shot 150, the binge revisions, all of these which we have done in these last one week especially, I hope they will help you in your exam. So if nothing works, you know, you're not able to read anything, at least watch these sessions. I'm pretty sure they'll help you for your exam. So all the very best. Stay calm and hope for the best, but at the same time, be prepared for the worst. Remember, this is just another exam and uh, it's not the end of the world. Okay. So, all the very best again and have the faith and go with all the confidence and positivity. Waiting to hear from you tomorrow from each of you. Thank you so much. Goodbye and take care.